Hey guys, Brent Holt, Build Show, talking today about moldings and why old house interiors look better than new house interiors. There's a clear reason why. Come join me today in the Build Show. Okay, so you know I've been doing research for the book. The first chapter's done. Yay! I've researched and looked at how moldings were presented historically, and I see a clear difference between the molding catalogs and the molding and pattern books of the 1700s versus the 1900s. And it made me realize that one of the reasons why old houses and old interiors, the classical interiors, look so good is because they spent so much time on it. Let me show you some examples. This is a William Payne pattern book. This is plate, uh, I don't know how to do Roman numerals. 35, three X's and a V. So look what he's doing here, okay? These are architraves. So these are door casings and window casings. And you'll notice on here, he's got all these little numbers, okay? That one says three quarter, three quarter, one quarter, one and a quarter, half, three and a quarter, right? What's happening there? And notice they do it on, on all this height. They've got these moldings figured out. They've got a height and a width all worked out in here. What are they doing? What's going on? Here's another one, okay? And here's another architrave. This is from William Payne, 1799. This is plate 45, okay? Inch and a half, one, three, three and a half. And then the, the width across here. What's going on, okay? What you realize as you read these pattern books and, and, what, and what they're doing here is that the proportion of these moldings was really important. The proportions of all the different parts and pieces. So every little change from a fillet to a scotia to a oval oat to all these different pieces are proportioned out from width to height, okay, and length and everything else. There is a proportion on, you know, how they looked at the room. If you look at Beatty Langley's book on this, this mantle and fireplace, the proportions are carefully figured out. They've got all these numbers going up the side, up to 21. They've got these numbers going across the bottom. They've got these radiuses. I don't know if you can see those in here for where these different parts and pieces go. But realize that everything that's in these historic pattern books is very carefully proportioned. So much so that they talk about the door case and the architrave to an opening and a ratio and a proportion to the size of the opening and you know all of these different rules that they had for helping making space beautiful. Now, what was going on? Here's an Asher Benjamin pattern book, okay, uh, 1750s. Essentially, what, what and it, look how it's got the order broken out. So this is the Tuscan order, and they've got the height, all these different sizes down here. Right here it says the minutes. So all the proportions and pieces are broken out in the classical order. So what these ancient pattern book authors were doing was they were looking at the past, okay, looking at Andre Palladio's book as he broke out the orders from classical Greek and Rome, and so mostly Rome. And so they were looking at those classical orders and looking at those classical systems and saying, oh my gosh, the reason it's beautiful because proportions of that system are beautiful, right? So they look at Vitruvius's book and it talks about the male and the female gender of these different orders that the Tuscan order and the Doric order is very strong and masculine, one to seven, and the feminine order is much lighter and daintier, right? And so they started looking at all those proportions because Andrew Palladio, when he went back to Rome, he was actually measuring all those things to figure out how the Romans had built those great buildings. He wrote his book, The Four Books of Architecture, explaining how this system works. That was in 1570. Everybody after that time is following and learning and relearning this system. So when Asher Benjamin in 1850, okay, writes and draws out this plate, he is educating his readers about the classical system. And all these proportions were evident in the order, right? So then what they do, and there's Beatty Langley in the 1740s, okay, is they take every, this one says, the divisions of general parts of the Tuscan order with pedestal in its parts. So basically over here is the full order, right? And they've got numbers in here talking about there's one to seven. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the height of the capital to the one in the diameter. And then all the entablature, the pedestal and all those different parts. And then they actually break it out the pedestal and it shows how far the, the pedestal base should be, what the chair rail, right? The pedestal cap should look like they dove down into these systems and proportioned everything out. And you see the one, two, three, four, five, radius over here to a radius in the width. All these things were broken out. 
Here's architraves in Asher Benjamin's book. These are Greek revival moldings, but they've got all these dimensions over here. There's, there's, in this one, there's 46 total and all of five, 22, two, 10, all these things broken out. Every molding had a proportion and a scale. Realize we don't do this anymore, right? You know, it's just, well, there's a door case and there's the three-step base, there's a clamshell. So this system of proportioning was very important and it carried across to the entire room. Look what he did in 1740, this book, to proportion the cornice to a room of any height. Okay, this is plate 76. In other words, how tall do you want your crown, okay? How tall should the crown and cornice be for any room, okay? And so one, two, three, four, five, and he describes that in this first plate, in the Tuscan, Doric, Ionic order, remember every one is different based on the order and the scale, He's got, you know, you divide the room into five parts and then you take the uppermost part and divide it into three parts and then the third part's going to be the height of your cornice, right? So there was these systems for proportioning and laying things out. And so if you're a trim carpenter and you wonder what the crown should be in a room or if you're a homeowner or you're a builder, and these rules have already been worked out. These the systems of building and the proportioning, and it's no wonder those rooms we go into them and go, God, I don't know why I like this, but I like this. It feels so good. They spent tons of time working to get their rooms beautiful. This is an Abraham Swan book. Notice that it's broken out into one, two, three, all the way up to 19 parts, right? If you've studied the ICA stuff, the Ionic Order is broken into 19 parts. I believe it's the Ionic Order. But then you see the height of the pedestal. You see the height of the entablature. You see the height of the door. And very carefully, these beautiful rooms were laid out so... When you stood in them, you felt right. There was a human scale evident in these rooms that made them beautiful and wonderful. So why did it work? It worked because they worked hard on it, right? Why are those rooms beautiful? Because they spent so much time trying to get them right. So what do we do today? How do we make our rooms beautiful? Well, hopefully my book, when it finally comes out, will help you work through those things. But there's a bunch of stuff that I've found in studying these historic pattern books that are rules to help us build better and rules to help us organize and, and make a room awesome. If and when we copy the past, there are things that we are gaining in the process. There are things that we are improving, okay, so that our door casing shouldn't be two and a quarter, right? It should be at least four to five inches. And the reason why I say those things is because I'm looking at the past, seeing how those skin things were proportioned and scaled out so that we can have proper size bases, proper size casings, proper size crowns. And so all of those things can help us build better, can make more beautiful spaces. And if you want to, right, you can get into a proportion and laying out of your entire room so that your architrave, your casing, your crowns, everything else are proportioned just like those historic pattern books so that your rooms will be more beautiful and more awesome. Guys, a lot of these ideas and these tricks and stuff are being shared on Patreon. If you want to join my Patreon, Patreon Passion for Craft, if you join at the journeyman level, you will get access to my library where I'm sharing a bunch of this information. There's peaks into the past way we used to build so that you can become more knowledgeable. Also sign up for the newsletter. There's great information there. I'm Brent Hull. Thanks for watching.